Hi everybody, Harris here with iDownload Blog. Today we're taking a look at some of my favorite things to do and some of the best things to do when you get a new Mac, whether it's the new 14 inch or 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro or any other Pro or an Air. Here are some of the best things that you can do when you get started with your new Mac. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I like to do is actually enable the three finger drag on the trackpad. I think this is a very convenient way of moving around windows without having to click on the trackpad. So in order to do this, you're gonna go into accessibility and then you're gonna go down to pointer control. And from there, click on trackpad options and you can turn on enable dragging. And you can also have with inertia or without so that'll adjust, so that'll adjust the flow of it as you move it around the quicker you move it, the quicker it'll continue going. I find it much easier to move windows around with this turned on. Now secondly is another trackpad feature. I personally turn off natural scroll. I think natural scroll is unnatural. I think that when I drag my fingers down the trackpad, I want the page to move down with it. So I know it might be a hot take for some people, but whatever you're used to, I personally like this turned off. And that's one of the very first things that I do. Next, there's a couple really nice features in the desktop and screensaver settings. So if you click on that, first, if you go down to hot corners, this allows you to customize what the four corners of your uh, computer will do if you drag your mouse to that corner. I've always, for as long as I can remember, had the desktop feature turned on for the upper right hand corner. This means that no matter where I am, if I need to get to the desktop to access a photo or a folder or whatever, I can very quickly just swipe to the upper right hand corner and it will reveal the desktop, which is really convenient, super convenient. Now on macOS Monterey, the bottom right hand is by default the quick note, which you can have on or off. I think it's kind of nice if you want to do a very quick note uh, without launching the notes app by itself, you can do that, or you can customize it to whatever you want. Obviously, you can do screensaver, mission control, uh, launch pad, put the display to sleep, or whatever. In the bottom left hand, I have start screensaver because I like this. Sometimes when I'm not working and I just want a nice little background, I enable the screensaver, and there's actually some pretty nice screensavers that you can look through and you can see all the other screensavers that they have. The Monterey one's pretty cool too. And then you have some of the more classic ones, such as the Drift, which goes way back. All right, the next thing I do with my Mac, because I do have a Mac with Touch ID, and this will depend on if you have Touch ID or not, but I turn off the password autofill setting. This means that when you're in Safari or any other application that is requesting a password, you won't have to do Touch ID every time you want it to autofill your password. And I think that if you're already logged into your computer, probably not a big deal to not need Touch ID for every password autofill. So I turn that feature off. Now also on the trackpad, I'm personally used to the secondary click or you know the, the right hand menu being a click in the bottom right hand corner. So in the trackpad settings, I have that turned on. Whatever you're used to or whatever you like best, you can certainly do. But I just remember for many years always using the bottom right click, especially with my old Toshiba laptop that had a physical click in the bottom right hand corner. So I'm just used to that and I like this setting turned on. Now the dock and menu bar are two essential parts of the Mac experience because the menu bar is pretty much always there and has gotten upgrades over the past couple years. And the dock is super important for, well, getting to your favorite applications. Now people argue about the best way to do this, but here are my thoughts. I like the dock to be relatively small, I don't need it taking up too much space, and I certainly like the automatically hide and show the dock because I just don't need it taking up extra space on my screen when I only need an app every so often. So I turn on automatically hide and show the dock, so that way if I need my dock I just swipe to the side, get my application, and I'm good. Uh, I don't really think that it needs to take up screen real estate, especially not when it's you know super big. And then I also do like it on the left hand side of the screen. I don't really have a great reason for that other than the fact that it means if I'm working on something on the bottom of my screen, such as Final Cut Pro with the horizontal scroll bar, I do like to be able to access that without pulling up the dock. So I keep it to the left. I think it stays out of the way nicely and uh, I just like it there. Now you can also automatically hide and show the menu bar, but because I like the clock and a couple other features that are in the menu bar, I have that setting turned off. Now in terms of the menu bar, it's really nice to be able to customize that easier than ever. Now with Control Center, you can simply drag any of the controls in Control Center right up to your menu bar, and that's great. 
Now one of the things I like to do is turn on the second hand when I am using the clock. Sometimes I'm doing a task that I would like to pay attention to the seconds. Uh, it's also just a nice little point of precision. So I turn on the second hands in the clock. And of course I love the now playing feature because it'll show you anything that's playing sound on your device, whether it be the music app or YouTube in Chrome or a QuickTime video. It'll give you a list of all those that you can pause or play on the spot. Now one thing that I don't have in the menu bar is Spotlight because Spotlight is so easy to get to with the command space that I really just don't think it's necessary to take up extra real estate in the menu bar. Now one feature that I turn off very quickly would be under displays and that is automatically adjust brightness. Uh, I just don't find that it's precise enough for what I'm looking for and it just changes too often. So using the brightness controls from your keyboard are very much easy enough so I just rely on those and I do not have automatic brightness adjustment turned on. Now next there are decent wallpapers on uh, Monterey and you can choose through apples and they've added a couple new this year but typically I am pretty bored with those wallpapers so I do generally go to idownloadblog.com and go to the wallpaper setting and, and there are so many different wallpapers every week there are really high resolution new ones added uh, so that's how I typically get my backgrounds, not from Apple, so that's something nice. And one of my favorite applications to download is called Owly, and I use this simply to prevent my display from going to sleep. So this usually is for when I'm exporting a video, I need to leave the room and don't want it to uh, close on me, or maybe I'm uploading something and it's gonna take an hour and I don't want my display to sleep, but I also don't wanna change the length of the sleep time in the settings. So I'll just turn on Owly, and enable it for you know an hour, two hours, four hours, depending on what I need. So that's a really simple piece of software that I've been using for years. But those are the first things I do when I get a new Mac. Some of them are definitely personal, uh, but others I think are really great and more universal. Let me know the things that you change first on your Mac, and thank you so much for watching.